So I'd like to hop now back to our survey tab where we can look at some of the different functions in the Survey123 Connect app. Here we can see the first column is going to be our type. This is what type of field our Survey123 Connect form will be looking at. So we have multiple of the same, or we have some of the same uh, field types that you'd see kind of that you're familiar with here uh, from some Esri field types. We can see we have text, we can have a, a list of different, so we can have a selection list, we can have where we're just, we're having our users select one option. We can have it where our users can select multiple options from that list. We have notes, some point types, uh, date and time types, images, attachments, etc. The next column we're going to look at, this is going to be the field name for uh, the feature class or the related table on uh, AGO. So this asset ID, this is the, the field name of the related table asset ID field in that related table. The next, quad, the next column here, the label column, that's what we're looking at in our survey. So this is going to be how that, uh, that item is labeled within our survey form. Speaking of which, I'll go ahead and I'll pull that in now so we can take a, a closer look at that. So we can see this is going to be our survey preview on the right here. This is our Survey123 Connect app. It's going to show us a preview of our survey as we build it in the XLS form. Here we can see I've labeled this asset ID question with asset ID. You can see this is how this appears in our survey. Same for inspection date and the rest of our fields in our survey. The next field we're gonna take a look at is hints. Here we can apply any hints uh, or, or sort of prompts, help prompts for our users in the survey. So maybe in the comments I'll say, enter any relevant comments below. This is just something that'll help our users uh, help answer the questions, help direct them to answer the questions in the Survey123 form. Next, we can set constraints. So we can limit users' answers based on this constraint. Um, if I wanted to say, um, for example, you can only select this option uh, if I have selected a, another option or a previous field, constrain my answers or my possible answers to these. Uh, we'll probably dive into this a little bit more in our next webinar, incorporating some of this advanced logic in. Constraint message, this is going to be kind of like our hints mes uh, message that we just typed in before. We can make some fields required. So say uh, we need an asset ID required, we're going to drop that under yes. This is going to be a required field that a user has to answer in our survey form before it is submitted. We can have these uh, questions appear differently in our survey form. As you see right now, we've got uh, a couple text fields. We've got a date field for our inspection date. And you can see from our condition fields here in our survey, they're just the basic default select one uh, appearance. So from the user see, they have all the different options outlined for them in their list. And as the user goes to fill out the survey, they'll be able to select one from this list of options. However, you can kind of see it, it makes the survey long and cumbersome to scroll through. So for example, if we wanted to change the appearance of this question type, we would use this appearance tab to change. Um, right now from the basic, we could call it minimal. Uh, say we could do another one as horizontal. That's another good one. And we'll kind of see how those, those appear later on in the survey. We can set default answers for users. So on our inspection date, I'll set a default date of today. When a user goes to uh, submit a survey, today's date will automatically populate in that field and that, to that default value you set, just to make that uh, you know, time saving and, and efficient for the end users. And kind of this is another way to eliminate error within, within surveys by also giving them a default value. Our next tab is read only, so we can have certain fields set to read only if we don't want uh, users to be able to change values or update field uh, values. We can have those appear as read only. So my asset ID, I'm going to say yes. I only want my asset ID to be read only.